Coming up on Access ONU, changes that affect you on campus, we'll have the details. We sit down and talk with our newest head football coach, and we meet up with some of you in the quad to hear about your goals for this new academic year. You're watching Access ONU. These are the stories impacting you on your campus. You're watching Access ONU. There are several changes this semester as we start the new academic year. Joining to discuss some of those changes are Dr. Woody Webb, Vice President for Student Development, Bryce Gridzine, General Manager of Sodexo, and ASC Student Body President, Caleb Miller. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Great. Thank, Thank you, Sally. Well. Okay, so Dr. Webb, would you like to tell us more about room checks and apartments and how that's all working this year? Yeah, you know, uh, every year we review all of the resident hall policies and often those policy recommendations make their way up through resident assistants and resident directors and sometimes policy conversations happen start happening with ASC and so there's been some conversation over the last couple of years just related to uh, the accountability checks that we've done in the apartments for the last several years and uh, recognizing that students most of them living in apartments are juniors and seniors and uh, so in the policy, the, the uh, in our policy has not changed. It's still in writing, still in place, but we're not doing the accountability checks and just hoping that students will honor the uh, policies that are in place. So that's really the main change that took place in the apartments this, uh, this year. Okay, so curfews are still intact. Yes, curfews are still in place, but uh, as juniors and seniors that live in the apartments, our hope and expectation is that they will honor those and will not be doing the nightly checks that we've done in the past. Okay, and then as we all know, there were a lot of changes that took place in Ludwig, mm -hmm. um, bags and cubby holes and trays. So Bryce, if you'd like to join in on this conversation yeah. as well. Sure. Yeah, let me start by just saying that um, Sodexo began the conversation mm -hmm. with Olivet and primarily student development um, probably three to four years ago and to be honest I was the one who resisted uh, the change and uh, put it off and it was really out of my own lack of understanding at that point because um, I wasn't aware of the number of schools who had already gone trailless on their campus uh, there are eight Nazarene uh, colleges in the United States and all have been trailless for several years and all of it was the last one to go trailless and so once you really look at the, the research and the rationale behind that, it just began to make more sense to me. And so this year we started conversation and uh, with Sodexo's help and research, uh, we did a collection of food waste and Bryce can probably talk a little bit more about that. And that really kind of helped propel the conversation to going trailers. Yeah, And that, that's last, uh, I think it was April, March or April, we conducted a at random, uh, when the students brought back their trays to the conveyor line, what we do is we collected everything that was non-liquid, uh, buns, potatoes, whatever it was, and we put it into a garbage can and we weighed that at the end of the day, at the end of the meal period. And we wound up that for every, you know, roughly five to seven students, um, the waste that they could have fed one extra person. So uh, we started, that's when that really sort of came to light for Olivet and us. And so then we started putting together some figures of what it cost us to run a tray through the dish machine, the electricity, the water, the chemicals, things of that nature, even labor. And so we started putting all that together and then we presented it back to the university and with open arms, and Woody was a very big proponent of that, which was really great because uh, we saw that change happen. Um, it was funny and, and we were talking about the number of schools and I was amazed at how many schools across the country have this program going. And yes, Olivet is one of the last Nazarene schools, but really when it comes down to it, you're gonna see this all over the country because it is an important part. The other thing that it does do, and uh, Woody and I observed this in the cafeteria, is that when the students go, especially during chapel time, like when it's time to go to chapel, everybody gets up from breakfast and 
puts their their plates and everything on a conveyor line. One of the things we're finding out, instead of just having that one tray on that conveyor line, we're finding two or three people are able to share that one platform, which is speeding up the line for them to re go back. Plus it assists our staff in the back who are collecting that, makes it a lot faster for them too. Yeah. So again, a lot of efficiencies are happening because of the trailers. You know, I recognize whenever we put a policy like this in place, it has a huge impact on the end user, which is our students. And so early on in the conversation, when I felt like this is the direction we needed to head, I began conversations with ASC, and Caleb was a part of those conversations, and he might be able to address some of the students' perspective on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think students, um, as many students would be able to tell you, are probably a little hesitant to change. You know, we're all a little um, wary of, of changes to our, you know, our day-to-day -day lives here at Olivet. Um, but I think the general perception from the students in regards to trays is, um, I, we're all aware that our world is changing and that we're becoming more conscious of how we are using our resources here at Olivet. And um, we understand um, as Christians that we want to be good stewards of our resources as well. Um, so I think students on campus are, are, while they're still adjusting to these changes of having to maybe make a couple trips back and forth to the line, to the, um, to the soda machine, that um, we are making a difference. Um, we're making a difference on campus by, by saving these resources and, um, you know, being good stewards of the resources we do have here at all of it. Yes. And I know there's been a lot of discussion about the new rules of putting bags in the cubby holes if one of you would like to tackle that. And yeah, I'll start with that. Um, it is a new policy that uh, Sodexo had talked to me about early on, and we didn't have a chance to really uh, process uh, that like we often do with policy changes. Uh, but after having additional conversations, not with just students, but also with Bryce, we've actually are reversing that decision. In fact, an email by the time this airs, an email will be out to students communicating a different uh, policy related to that. It was really set up to address two issues, and I'll talk about this in the um, uh, written communication. First, the trip hazard that is created when students have uh, book bags on the floor at their feet and people are trying to pass through very tight spaces in between the tables and chairs. And the second is um, there are some students who would use their book bag to take items out of the uh, dining room and that just that really when that happens that just adds cost to the meal plan over two or three years. And so um, there are those factors involved but I think there's other ways to address it and so we're actually going to be uh, communicating a change related to that and uh, students will be able to take their book bags into the dining room. Okay, can you give us any details on what that change will be like or are you still... Yeah, we're just going to be right back to the same. We're just going to ask students to make sure that they are... Um, make sure that their bag is clear out of the aisle and it's not creating any type of uh, trip hazard okay. for students. Okay, and then Bryce, could you address any changes that are in Sodexo that students should be aware of outside of that? Well, we're, I think we're off to a really good start, and I know that the book bag was, mm -hmm. was an issue, but I think, I think it's going to be favorable for everybody, especially the students who are mm -hmm. dining now. So uh, we do have a couple things going on. Uh, one of the big things that I'm looking forward to is for the third year in a row, Sodexo, our location has been selected as the global chef. Yeah. Um, so uh, two years ago we had an Australian chef, last year we had a Netherlands chef, and then this year, uh, October 13th and 14th, right after the little fall break, we're going to have a Malaysian chef. So um, he will be here for two days, um, we will be doing a dinner for the students, we'll, okay. some of his recipes, some of his expertise will be out there so on that Thursday night and then uh, we're looking to have maybe a lunch or something like that for some of the, the people at uh, Olivet in the dining room to, so that he can do some plate service and things of that nature. So we're looking forward to it because um, my staff gets a lot out of it because my, my chef actually goes for a three-day training wow. with him and then all the chefs are brought in throughout the United States to one central location where they're all trained, his recipes, and then he hits the floor running for the next month that Malaysian chef. So he's on the road. <laughs> and Bryce, you want to talk about the uh, new commuter plan? Yes, um, that is one of the things we did do. We started looking at, um, I've had some conversations with the commuters and things of that nature, and we see that um, a lot of them didn't 
like partake in the in the plans that we we have. So we came up with I we call it in our office the 3030 plan, and it's 175 dollars. And basically what it is is it's 30 swipes is what you get. Okay, so a meal plan, and then uh, you also get 30 dollars worth of flex dollars. So what's nice about it is is and everybody has their calculators out, and I will tell you best thing to do is I know lunch and dinner are the best price options when you're using your swipes um, and then if you can go down to the red room and use your swipe Ludwig can get, go use your swipe and also in uh, Nesbitt for simply to go so I think there's a lot of options that have opened up for especially the commuters That's definitely Caleb can you tell us anything else about student life that students should be aware of Candy Costume Fest coming up at the holiday or Halloween weekend um, and obviously the big Christmas party at the end of the year. So lots of fun things coming up for Life at All of it. Um, hoping everyone checks out the app and all the social media pages uh, to keep up to date with that. Great. Thank you so much for joining me today, gentlemen. Great. Thank you. Going Thank along you. with changes at Olivet, we are meeting up with some of you out in the quad to hear what your goals are for this academic year. And I'm also running track, so hopefully I'll be starting on a 4 by one this year. I'm coming for y'all. Yes, that's right. And hopefully, I'm just trying to have an all-around year because I'm a freshman. I'm trying to get to know everyone, so hopefully it'll be a good year. Only pull five all-nighters max. Pass all of my classes and actually succeed with structural analysis. Just study for the LSAT for law school. Um, make the dean's list and uh, try to find a job for next summer. I play on the tennis team here, so to compete really well there and be able to go far in regionals and nationals and stuff like that. Um, also just to gain really good friends. Just to just graduate this semester um, and then just make sure that I can push through uh, this master's program here at all of that and uh, finish up pole vault strong this year. To have 24 dates, 1815-634-4432. The ONU Tiger football team is under new management this year. Joining us off the field is the head coach. He's with Access ONU's Nathan DiCamillo. Nathan? Access ONU Sports. Thanks, Allie. I'm here with all of its new head coach, Eric Heyman, who coached at Malone University for six years in Ohio and Greenville College, Illinois, for five years. Coach, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. So... Coming on to all of us campus, you've had um, 21 years of coaching already mm -hmm. under your belt. Um, what was your first impression of uh, all of its football team? Well, there's a first first impression and then your first impression. My first first impression was when we coached against them. So at both uh, Taylor mm -hmm. University and, and Trinity, I had had the opportunity to coach I, against them and I coached Newsom specifically and actually uh, Coach Conway uh, way back when. And then also I had the opportunity to work some camps with the staff. And I knew that some of the staff over the past years because it's a close uh, fraternity. And uh, so it was always good. Really, really thought it was a, a really strong place. Loved the Christian mission. Um, thought football has a great opportunity to be uh, really successful. And then when I came on campus for the interview and those type of things, all those assumptions were true. You know, I thought mm. it's a great campus, uh, great administration, great facilities. Uh, great academics, really interested in the holistic development of students, spiritually, academically, athletically, and I thought it was a great fit from that perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the years, what has your coaching philosophy looked like, and how do you think that will translate to all of that? Uh, you know, I, th I think it kind of goes with the phrase, four years for forever, mm -hmm. and so we would want the impact uh, from our four years with them as a staff uh, to impact each and every player for the rest of their life. And so uh, great athletic experience, a great academic experience, a great character and spiritual development experience that would impact them in each chapter of their life. So uh, that would be something, uh, that's my philosophy. Mm -hmm. Now, at Greenville College, uh, you led the Panthers there into their first National Christian College mm -hmm. Athletic Association postseason um, at the Victory Bowl in 2009. Mm -hmm. And then at Malone University, you actually took that program from an NAIA, mm -hmm. NAIA program to an NCAA Division II program. Mm -hmm. So those are pretty good successes. 
what is your goals looking at all of this program? Where do you want to take us? Uh, my history as a coach has been to be at programs that have struggled and to help them uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, get to a spot where they're successful on and off the field. And so both of those opportunities help prepare um, me for the opportunity that's at Olivet. Olivet, I, I believe the last eight years, hasn't had success uh, on the field. And so our goal would be to have success on the field, off the field, in, in every way. And so I think we've been prepared to do that. It's just going to take some time, uh, and it's a process, and, and we're eager for that process. How did Coach Newsom find you? Well, I mean, I think it's a small circle of coaches that have that fit mission and and have uh, the desire to be at a school that's a you know a Christ-centered school, and so I think they just go through the process of opening up, and then uh, when they find their person, they interview and, and go through that process. So, all right, thank you, Coach Heyman, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Back to you in the studio. Joining us today in the studio is Glimmerglass Executive Editor Grace King to share about some exciting changes that are taking place in the newspaper, as well as an opportunity for you to get involved. Grace? The Glimmerglass has served as the newspaper at Olivet for 75 years. The newspaper has a rich history of serving the Olivet community and giving a voice to the students. For the past three years that I've worked at the paper, we've printed 12 issues during each academic school year. This semester, we're excited to announce our transition to publishing exclusively on our online platform. We gained a lot of momentum with our WordPress website last semester, and we want to continue that by focusing on our online presence, publishing more stories more frequently and with greater attention to detail. You can look for us on our WordPress or on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with current events at Olivet and in the surrounding area. Currently, we are accepting applications for new writers from any major or concentration. For more information, email glimmerglass at olivet.edu or visit our office in the basement of Ludwig. Allie? This semester, we will be featuring you. Send us any story ideas you think should be shared. You can email us at accessonu at olivet.edu. Thanks for joining us on our first edition of Access ONU this semester. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date on all the campus news. Have a great week.